some huge voices in America and the UK and around the world saying children should be learning to code and why are we not teaching our children to code. I love programming computer games, I think it's more fun than playing them. It's a valuable part of the economy and it's a skill shortage and we need good coders in this country. There needs to be a, a big leap forward in thinking there to get it moving forward fast and, and particularly like you know how can we get coding into the curriculum faster, you know it really is so super super important. My name's David Miller, I'm Chief Learning Architect at Quattro Studios and we're based here in London in Shoreditch. This is a startup which is aimed at disrupting the educational space and so the dynamic in the studio is really interesting. You've got like a bunch of AI PhDs, game developers, designers and educators. It's just a really cool melting pot which is all about going out there and really getting the kids inspired into it. Normally you get a team who are very much school-based, education-based, and they try to make a game that's fun. By virtue of that, you kind of get a game that's very worthy, but really dull. My classroom was always a place of play and humour and fun, but at the same time there was serious and deep learning going on, so the game has to be fun, it has to be engaging. We wanted things that kids get really excited about and buzz in the playground, otherwise it doesn't work. got out this app called Hikitsu and it's all about learning to code and learning to code via JavaScript. It's a turn-based game so it's kind of like mega chess if you like with robots. So you have these two robots and they're both protecting a kind of a central core and the idea is that each pair of robots has to move to the other side of the arena and hack the core of their opponents three times and then they've won the game. In order to make their robots move at all they've actually got to call functions in JavaScript. JavaScript is very much an introduction, um, it's for people that have never faced it before, which means that anyone can pick it up. We've targeted it 11 to 14 as a starting age, but we already know of 8 and 9 year olds that have had a go with it, because it is so well scaffolded and in a structured framework, and there's a tangible result to it as well. In the classroom you would have a test, which is, you know, can you do this and can you do that? Whereas with a game, the test is the game itself. So if you have managed to defeat someone else with your robot, that is proof that you've learned how to code. It's not going to mean from playing this game you're going to go off and get a job with Facebook or Microsoft straight away, but it's that introduction. Yeah, it's a good game. It's like one of them games like strategy and kind of warfare, which a lot of kids like these days. The graphics are good on it as well. It's a lot of fun. Just not when you're getting shot and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that's what makes you want to um, like learn more about it so that you can um, show it to your friends. Yeah, if you make a mistake then it will just turn red so then you can just um, go back to that code and rewrite what you done wrong. So it's quite easy to um, figure out and it's quite easy to get the hang of the codes and stuff. <laughs> What I found fascinating was in testing the game both in the UK and in the States was how quickly kids just intuited what they should be doing. You know, they were straight in there using the correct syntax, they were correcting one another. It's comma and then how many squares you would want to move forward, close brackets and then semicolon. I think games like Hikitsu are very good at sparking interest. It's something that introduces them to coding in a particular way and shows that it can be fun. It hits two types of player, so there's the player that just wants to be there to blow up other robots and use the weapons and fight, but in order to do that, they're having to use real JavaScript. And then there's the other user that's coming out and saying, oh, I've, quite, I've heard about coding, I'd quite like to have a quick go at it, and obviously they're enjoying the game as well. Seriously getting teenagers buzzing about an educational app is pretty unusual. Yes, I've got it to go where I wanted it to go. I'm so happy in your mind. So we've been developing this code game initially, but in the background we've also been developing a whole engine around artificial intelligence, a platform if you like. What we are trying to do, we are trying to understand natural language, and uh, that is uh, still, I think, a very popular uh, problem in research. Uh, however, that's why it's also fun to work on this, because it's very difficult, it's very challenging, a uh, very ambitious project. The ability to emulate and in fact improve on a human tutor that is able to have a conversation with you, reason with you, have an understanding about what you learn, how you like to learn. 
to mimic what a teacher does beautifully in the classroom every day. You know, all these little nuanced questions and responses and nudges and encouragements that happen when teacher meets pupil eye to eye. So that child speaking to a mobile device like an iPad, but still capturing that sense of engagement, that sense of trust that exists between the learner and the teacher.